My father, disciplinarian, he was, you know, he definitely demanded respect, especially from his kids. And there were things that you did do and things that you did not do, you know, and this is how you behave in public and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's hard for me to say which character is like that because that's just who he is. But um, I think all of his characters carried with them that, that demand for respect. Well, hi, I'm Charlay Moore. I'm with the WLOK Film Festival. And today we are inter interviewing Ms. Beverly Henderson. And we will also um, hear about not only her uh, perspective on his legacy, but we also, I want to learn a little bit about her. Well, hello everybody. And uh, thank you, Charlay, for having me and inviting me. Welcome to the film festival. I hope you enjoy it. Having your dad as a movie star, how has that impacted you or what that meant to you? My answer is basically very simple. He's my dad and, you know, he's not a movie star for me. He's and my sisters. He's he's our dad. And so um, it's I don't know anything different. OK, I don't know anything other than being the daughter of Sidney Poitier and, you know, still having to um, make sure I'm home before curfew and <laughs> doing my homework, et cetera, et cetera. So he was a regular dad in that respect. When did you realize though that people held your dad into this esteem? I knew in, I guess it was middle school maybe or elementary school because whenever I missed the bus and he took me to school, it was a big brouhaha because it was like, oh, is that your dad? Is that your dad? And so um, being a middle schooler and wanting to have anonymity as most of us do at that age, you know, it was like trying to avoid that at all costs. But um, I do recall when it was bring your parents to school and let them talk about their jobs and what kind of jobs they do. And I had classmates whose dads were policemen or engineers or doctors, et cetera, et cetera. And I was extremely embarrassed because I had to say that my father was an actor. And to me, acting wasn't really a job. It looked like a lot of fun from my point of view. So it took me a while to realize that it was indeed a very serious profession and he was well regarded. What is your favorite film of your dad? I, mean, I have so many. Um, I love Racing in the Sun because of the, the, the energy and um and because it's it's um it reminds me very much of my childhood because i can remember going to see the play first and then um going to la to shoot the movie so um i have a lot of personal feelings about that plus my um aunt ruby and uncle ozzy not, i'm sorry uncle ivan were in there and that's ivan dixon and ruby d mm -hmm. so um I enjoy that movie, just just for that, and then the storyline, et cetera. And then um, Buck and the Preacher, really enjoyed that because at that time, it was a very different point of view about what the West and African-Americans in the West and you know first Americans in the West. And I really appreciate that whole storyline. And again, it was fun. And I got to see Uncle Harry and Aunt Ruby again and hanging out, watching them. So I enjoyed that one. That was like a whole lot of fun. And I thought Daddy looked spectacular in it. Did you meet Mrs. Hansberry? You know, I was young. Oh so yes, I don't have much of recall. I just remember I met so many people that were my parents' friends. And um, as you can imagine, you don't have a lot of interaction with your parents' friends when you're, <laughs> you know, Right. Young person. It's like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I do remember, I always wanted to be a writer, so I do remember talking to her a little bit. You know, there's so many, there's just so many. In the heat of the night, my favorite story about the heat of the night is um, my former father in law was on the film board in Ghana. And in the heat of the night came. And they were about to, because they saw some of the trailers, I guess, and they saw the slap, the white gentleman slapping my father. 
And so they were like, well, that's definitely not a movie that we're gonna have here. And then, but when they saw the movie and saw that he returned the slap, they were like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, that one, we can have that one here. So um, I think that was monumental too, because it wasn't as if, you know, it was different than the regular run of the mill African-American and Caucasian interactions, especially in the South. And which character do you think um, in watching your, your dad's films, would you say related most to him? I think all of his characters carried with them that, that demand for respect. You know, and the thing that I really appreciate about all of his characters, his choices of characters, is that he was very aware of how he was perceived and the characters that he played should reflect well on his father because when he saw his name in lights, he didn't see his name, he saw his dad's name. And how has that like, in, in influenced or inspired and carried on in which how you live today? Well, looking back, you know, as an adult and looking back, I mean, it was um, it was very cool because these were in the, we lived in New York, and the theater, the black theater um, family was in New York, and basically everybody knew everyone, and people were meeting in their living rooms and you know reading scripts and talking about things, and you know we would go to some rehearsals and see stuff, so it was. Um, it was a very rich and um, great way to grow up, really. Well, I think all of us, all of us are very much aware of um, our place on this earth. And I mean, not as Sydney Poitier's daughters, but as human beings. And we know that whatever we contribute has a lasting effect. You know, the butterfly with the wings and it, you know, it's ripple there's a ripple effect so i think we all conduct ourselves accordingly and you know we're all true to ourselves and i think that was one of the things that was very important to him and it stood out in all of his work is that he was always true to himself he was true to the person that he knew he was and he was true to the person his parents raised him to be was that something that um he shared with you or something that you were able to learn uh, about why he selected certain roles as it was known that he didn't want to play uh, what had been stereotypical during that time. You know, uh, what, some of the important things to understand was that he grew up in the Bahamas, so it was a majority culture. And he grew up on a very small island at first. So he did not, he did not experience the racism as far as being told that he was less than. So he never felt that he was less than anybody else, I think. And that's, you know, that's one of the things. And so he refused roles that would portray him as less than just because of his color. And, you know, I think that was throughout his career. And that, it's, it's just so important. Uh, since this is a radio station um, that is in partnership with this film festival, the WLOK radio station, you know what type of music he listened to or did he have a favorite genre? He liked jazz. He liked jazz and he liked um, blues, like Johnny Mathis. Um, and, you know, obviously, Calypso with Uncle Harry. Right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> He was, you know, he really liked, I know, jazz, and he was also into classical music. And later on in life, he enjoyed just listening to that. It was very relaxing for him. As far as his relationship with the press, I don't think you can underestimate the importance of black, the black press to people like my father and to, uh, but because that's where we learned about what was going on in the black community. You know, that, it, Back in the day, as they say, the white press, they were not covering us. And if they were, they weren't covering us with any veracity. So, you know, it was up to the black press to tell, tell us what was going on and to tell the truth. And, you know, and I just, I remember the Amsterdam news. I know I'm talking about New York and you're in Memphis, but you know, that I just remember those 
newspapers and I remember um, my mother was like Miss Amsterdam News when she was a model. I mean, I remember all of that and it was very important. So the black press was extremely important and I think it still is. It goes back to the, the fact that we all have a part to play and we have to do our best to do the to do the best job that we can and and also to to be to be aware that whatever you do in life i mean i think it's um the native americans who say that you know we walk we should walk softly on this earth because you know whatever it is that we're going to do it's going to have a lasting effect and um i think my father definitely was very much concerned with making his walk positive. I think that his legacy is that he made it possible for other African-Americans to select roles that portrayed who they thought they were and who they felt that they were, and that they were not, you know, stereotyped into, you know, one role and one, you know, like a maid or, you know, a chauffeur or, um, whatever, drug dealer, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. the, the stereotypes that we tend to have, we used to have, and hopefully don't have that many anymore. But I think that because he selected those roles, then it made it possible for people coming after him. It helped him to break through for other people. One of the things that he did that I'm very proud of is the fact that when he was on set, uh, he would notice that he was the only black person there, except for maybe someone who was a janitor. So he required and requested that there was somebody else behind the camera, you know, whether it's, you know, a gaffer, whether, you know, it's a script person, whatever. But um, he wanted to see other people like himself. And I think that helped a lot as far as, um, where we are today. We're not where we should be, but we're better off than we have been. Well, I appreciate you so much for taking this time uh, to talk to us. Not a problem, it's been my pleasure and I hope everyone enjoys the film festival.